Hi, I'm David Orbach. I'm a Cornell graduate and Chief Technology Officer of Toxistat. We're leading the technology development of a rapid, portable cyanide detection system to help emergency responders know whether or not to treat victims of smoke inhalation injury with an antidote. We're going to save lives and unmask a hidden killer. In the United States, every year, there are half a million house fires, 25,000 people are injured from smoke inhalation, and 3,000 die. That's the same amount of teens that die from texting while driving. So this is national news. Of those 3,000 civilians that die, 80 are these firefighting heroes that are risking their lives to save yours and your families every day. The problem is that we don't know what percentage of smoke has cyanide in it. The reason is that uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen cyanide are the toxic twins, and together they synergistically prevent your body from using oxygen to create energy. So people become incapacitated, suffer heart attacks, and die within one minute to one hour time frames. Every fire is different, and the amount of cyanide in the smoke depends upon what burns. Your house contains lots of cyanide-containing compounds. They're in natural and synthetic products, such as uh, wood, cotton, uh, your couch, your foam beds, etc. And when these burn, the cyanide inside of them turns into smoke. Oxygen cannot help with cyanide. It only helps with carbon monoxide. Fortunately, antidotes exist, but they're expensive and they have side effects. So you don't want to use it, the antidote if you don't have to, but you better use it very, very quickly if you need to. The emergency responder is faced with a choice. Do I give the antidote or not? It's $800 and it has some side effects. The question that they really want to know is how much cyanide is in this patient right now? And there are, the, there are no immediate cyanide measuring devices that can be used at the scene. We're Toxistat. We make, measure toxic things quickly. Here's how it works. At the scene, a standard blood draw into a standard vacuum container. And as the blood moves up, the acid inside completely obliterates all forms of blood and turns them into gas, all forms of cyanide and turns the cyanide into gas. As the gas moves through the, the, mem uh, through the membrane, it will hit a sensor which will quantify uh, the cyanide and give the emergency responder an actionable result. Either give the antidote and save a life or don't give the antidote and avoid the costs and the side effects. This portable diagnostic test, which is rapid, is made possible by the patent pending sensor that we're developing here at Cornell through the Center for Materials Research. In order to develop and bring a medical device through market, it takes a lot of effort. Fortunately, we have a great team. Joseph Rella is an emergency room toxicologist uh, at Weill Medical College in Cornell, in uh, New York City. He conceived of the, uh, the device and patented it. Uh, I'm doing the technology, and Rob and Ilana are, uh, bring leadership and medical marketing and uh, sales to the team. We're advised by Lou Walser and a great many number of students. Whatever we didn't know collectively, we asked. We spoke with 51 different customers across the entire medical industry, and we gained input before we started prototyping the device. One thing we learned was that firefighters and EMTs are not actually allowed to draw blood legally. That eliminated a sizable market that we had expected to go into. Fortunately, in speaking to others, we found a second reason to go into every single emergency room in the the world. Uh, we'll start with hospital responders, with, with uh, hospitals as our initial customers, and then we'll move into other industries, including uh, that, that make cyanide, jewelry, electroplating, etc. 
then defense and terrorism, and this will yield at least a $60 million market. That's just the US. Then we'll go worldwide. For example, Brazil and France are already purchasing a lot of the antidote due to the upcoming Olympics and terrorism events. Our timeline, we plan to launch realistically in two to three years. Uh, we first have to go through FDA testing and some clinical testing, FDA approval and clinical testing. So to date, we have a utility patent pending. We have two more on the way. We know our market is sufficient and we understand the competition. We're going to be faster than the current uh, tests and we'll be quantitative and hopefully more accurate than other emerging tests. Uh, we're currently uh, developing all this at the Cornell Nanoscale Facility and the Center for Materials Research. We seek FDA approval, manufacturing and distribution partners. We are very grateful for the $20,000 that we've been given so far to work on this project. I'd also like to point out that 23 students have benefited from working on this company's projects, uh, learning about business, entrepreneurship, startups, and they're using a real-world problem with a real-world solution. Um, so thank you for supporting us. Please continue to give to Cornell. And if anyone, uh, we're, we're, we're going to be doing this, but if anyone knows uh, any of these people, we would love to be connected. So please find me up afterwards. Thank you. This is a production of DMIG, the Dyson Media Innovation Group.